Hello everyone and welcome to our Sunday service. Today is the eighth Sunday after Trinity. This is also a, a little bit of a special service because it is in fact our last one online. This is something I've been doing since the beginning of the pandemic and I hope it's been a good way of keeping people connected, keeping people connected with their faith with each other uh, and helping people to worship at home, particularly during those periods of time when we haven't been able to hold services in our churches. So I say it's the last one, it's the last one for now in this current phase, uh, I think like many churches across the country and indeed across the world, we'll be reflecting uh, on what it means to be a church in the 21st century and how we can continue to engage with people online uh, as well as in church. So our last service on YouTube just for the time being, I hope it's been uh, enjoyable and worthwhile and helpful for you uh, during this very strange 15 months. So in our service today, we're going to hear from John's Gospel two stories of Jesus performing miracles and what that means uh, for us, what that means in our lives of discipleship. So for now, as we gather for our worship together in spirit, let's begin in prayer. Almighty and everlasting God, we beseech you to direct, sanctify and govern both our hearts and bodies in the ways of your laws and the works of your commandments, that through your most mighty protection, both here and ever, we may be preserved in body and soul through our Lord and Saviour Jesus Christ, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and for ever. Amen. Jesus says, repent, for the kingdom of heaven is close at hand. So let us turn away from sin and turn to the Lord, confessing our sins in penitence and faith. We have wandered and strayed from your ways like lost sheep. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. We have followed too much the devices and desires of our own hearts. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. We have left undone those things that we ought to have done, 
and we have done those things that we ought not to have done. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Jesus went to the other side of the Sea of Galilee, also called the Sea of Tiberias. A large crowd kept following him, because they saw the signs that he was doing for the sick. Jesus went up the mountain and sat down there with his disciples. Now the Passover, the festival of the Jews, was near. When he looked up and saw a large crowd coming towards him, Jesus said to Philip, Where are we to buy bread for these people to eat? He said this to test him, for he himself knew what he was going to do. Philip answered him, Six months' wages would not buy enough bread for each of them to get a little. One of his disciples, Andrew, Simon Peter's brother, said to Jesus, There is a boy here who has five barley loaves and two fish. But what are they among so many people? Jesus said, Make the people sit down. Now there was a great deal of grass in the place, so they sat down, about five thousand in all. Then Jesus took the loaves and when he had given thanks, he distributed them to those who were seated, so also the fish, as much as they wanted. When they were satisfied, he told his disciples, Gather up the fragments left over, so that nothing may be lost. So they gathered them up, and from the fragments of the five barley loaves, left by those who had eaten, they filled twelve baskets. When the people saw the sign that he had done, they began to say, This is indeed the prophet who is to come into the world. When Jesus realised that they were about to come and take him by force to make him king, he withdrew again to the mountain by himself. When evening came, his disciples went down to the lake, got into a boat and started across the lake to Capernaum. It was now dark and Jesus had not yet come to them. The lake became rough because a strong wind was blowing. When they had rowed about three or four miles, they saw Jesus walking on the lake and coming near the boat, and they were terrified. But he said to them, It is I, do not be afraid. Then they wanted to take him into the boat, and immediately the boat reached the land towards which they were going. It's very easy for us to miss things which are right in front of us. Let me give you an example. I wear glasses most of the time, and some of you are probably in the same position. And when I take my glasses off, I might put them by the bed or on the sofa or on my desk. And sometimes I'll just pop them on top of my head. And you know what? I'll completely forget that they're there. And there are times when I'll be running around the house thinking, where are my glasses? And then I eventually realise that they're on my head where I put them. How embarrassing. What's even more embarrassing is when you say, where are my glasses? And someone else points out that you are actually wearing them. So it's easy for people to miss what's right in front of us. And I think that there are hints of this in today's gospel reading. This lengthy passage from John's gospel contains two different but well-known stories two different miracles that Jesus performs, the feeding of the 5,000 and Jesus walking on the water. The reason I think people in this gospel reading are missing what's in front of them is the way that they respond to these two miracles, these two signs of Jesus' power and presence. When Jesus feeds this enormous crowd with only five barley loaves and two fish, what do they do? They start to say, this is the prophet who is to come into the world. In other words, they start to recognise Jesus as the Messiah, as God's chosen one. But then Jesus realises they're going to take him by force and make him their king. You can see why the crowd might respond in this way. They're waiting for this long prophesied Messiah, but they expect a great king, a mighty warrior who's going to crush their enemies and rule the kingdom. They see Jesus performing this incredible miracle feeding many more than 5,000 people with this tiny amount of food. And they start to think, yes, this is the one that we've been waiting for. But Jesus' miracle of feeding the crowd 
isn't about wanting to be king. It's about feeding people, nourishing them with the bread of life, showing them that God is with them, sustaining them. But the people are so enraptured with this idea of having an earthly king, they miss what God is showing them in this miracle, in this sign. In the second miracle, the disciples do something similar. They miss the point of what Jesus is showing to them, revealing to them. They're in the boat miles out to sea. The wind is blowing. The sea has become rough and dangerous. And then the disciples see Jesus walking towards them on the surface of the water. They're terrified. That's understandable. To see this display of God's power in the midst of the storm. Jesus speaks to reassure them. It is I. Do not be afraid, he says. But then the gospel says that they wanted to take him into the boat. Are they really terrified because they think that Jesus is in danger? They're literally seeing him walking on water and their response is to be afraid for his safety and want him to get into the boat where he's safe and can't drown. It's a very caring response, but again, they've missed the point. Jesus walking on water isn't anything to do with his safety. It's about God revealing himself in creation. God showing his people that he's with them in the midst of the storm. It's an incredible sign, but the disciples are just worried that Jesus might drown and they miss the point of that sign. John's gospel sets these two miracles in the context of Moses. In the previous chapter of the gospel, Jesus is speaking to the people about who he is. He tells them that he comes from the Father, bringing light and life and truth. But their history is full of God's signs being ignored. Jesus reminds them of Moses and says, if you believed Moses, you would believe me. He wrote about me. But if you do not believe what he wrote, how then will you believe what I say? And he goes on then to perform these two miracles that we've heard about today. One is to do with bread, the feeding of the 5,000, and the other is to do with water, Jesus walking on the waves. There's a real significance in these two miracles of bread and water because Moses too showed God's power with bread and water. Firstly, the Israelites wandering the desert, asking for food. Moses intercedes for them and God gives them manna, the bread of heaven. Mostly they complain about it to Moses and they don't listen to his instructions. And secondly, when the Israelites are escaping from slavery in Egypt, they come to the Red Sea and Moses calls upon God to get them across. And we all know the story, the waters part and they walk on dry ground to the other side, but not before complaining to Moses that he's brought them out into the wilderness to die. The bread from heaven and the parting of the Red Sea are signs of God's presence with his people, signs of his power and his glory in all the world. And in the same way, Jesus shows God's presence and power and glory by feeding this crowd with miraculous bread and coming to his disciples walking on the water. And so when you put these stories alongside each other, it's easy uh, to see how God's people can miss the signs of God's kingdom, which are right in front of them. It makes me wonder how many times we miss the signs of God's kingdom, which are right in front of us. How many times we see God at work in our lives, perhaps take it for granted. And then it makes me think about the ways even today, that God reveals himself to us using signs like bread and water. Think about our sacraments of communion and baptism, these special signs that Jesus gave to his church. Take and eat in remembrance of me. Go and baptise in the name of the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit. The signs of God's kingdom are everywhere, in church and in the world out there. But it can be so easy to miss them and to miss the point of what God's trying to show us and to take God's presence for granted. God's kingdom is so close that we could reach out and touch it for ourselves. He is coming to us on the water, offering salvation, and he's coming to us with the bread of heaven, offering life and nourishment to all. So as we come to him in worship, and as we go about our daily lives, may we see what is right in front of our eyes. God is with us. And Jesus says, it is I. Do not be afraid. In peace, let us pray to Jesus, our Lord. 
whoever lives to make intercession for us. Saviour of the world, be present in all places of suffering, violence and pain, and bring hope even in the darkest night. Inspire us to continue your work of reconciliation today. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord of the Church, empower by your Spirit all Christian people and the work of your Church in every land. Give us grace to proclaim the Gospel joyfully in word and deed. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Shepherd and guardian of our souls, guide and enable all who lead and serve our communities and those on whom we depend for our daily needs. Grant that we may seek the peace and welfare of this and every place. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Great Physician, stretch out your hand to bring comfort, wholeness, healing and peace to all who suffer in body, mind or spirit. Fill us with compassion that we may be channels of your healing love. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Conqueror of death, remember for good those whom we love but see no longer. Help us to live this day in the sure and certain hope of your eternal victory. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Rejoicing in the fellowship of the Blessed Virgin Mary and all the saints, we entrust all our prayers to the Lord in the words that Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. Lord God, your Son left the riches of heaven and became poor for our sake. When we prosper, 
save us from pride. When we are needy, save us from despair, that we may trust in you alone, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you this day and forevermore. Amen.